Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to do. <laughs> Easy to read. I love the setup. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm going to do all of the things. I mean, I cannot believe how cool this is. So uh, hold on to your Kubernetes hats because all I had to do was add backup enable to the harbor values.yaml file and I get a Kubernetes, a beautiful Kubernetes cron job, better than anything that we had written, better than anything that I would have written, uh, that already does a full Postgres dump all backup with a configurable cron job. Pause the video, pause for effect. If you don't know how cool that is, then you need to like play with Harbor some more, right? Because you would have had to written, write and written all this stuff. So what you're looking at right now, this, this is a diff of the resulting manifest file in our case, manifest slash, uh, base slash app dot YAML because we use customization. Um, and here you can see a couple of really interesting things. So right away you see Harbor Postgres, oops. You see Harbor Postgres SQL PG dump all, right? You also see this new label that's on everything. All the metadata is there. Actually, by the way, I confirmed that this is actually true because those are those come from the charts.lock file in the Harbor chart that locks the specific dependency on this chart, which means that when you do Helm template, it actually grabs that version of the chart, even though it's not, it's not represented in the YAML and the, and the values file. And I'll talk about that later. That means that that actually is the version that's being used in the official Harbor project, despite how fucked up. Sorry, I swore there. I was not supposed to swear. The values file is right. It's really messed up. Okay. And so let's keep going. So, I mean, you can go, you can go through this on your own, but this, you can see this, this is like everything you would expect. There's all the Postgres stuff there. Here is the very, very good right here is this like really amazing PG dump ball. If exists stuff going on, uh, it has the password there. It actually has the volume mounts. It creates PVC separately and slash backup, which is by the way, the same thing we were naming our mount points. So it's all the stuff that you would ever care to have for a PG dump ball. And it is built in the official Bitnami Harbor chart. So the reason it's important to say that is because this is one less way that we are going to divert from upstream. And if you know what it means to divert from upstream, if you don't know what that means, let me just tell you, it means work. It means work and stress and risk. Anytime that you can use a deployed upstream supported by the community thing in your enterprise, you should do it because almost always you're going to be better. Now, sometimes you get massive failures like Helm itself. It's a massive failure. I've been complaining and screaming and yelling and swearing the whole time about how screwed up the architecture is for Helm. doesn't matter. That's what people use. Um, uh, is also for Postgres. We're not using the operator for lots of reasons, including uh, all the CRDs that are created. If you don't know why, we can we can have a debate about that. But thank you for the comment. Um, so I, I, every time I talk about Postgres, I get somebody who suggests that we use the operator, and that's a short sighted recommendation. Um, that's just it's fine. It's just it's not not taking into account our system our situation. Uh, this is by the way, this is Harbor not Postgres. So it's Postgres inside Harbor. Okay. So what, what I'm, so the takeaway from this very short video is, Hey, look here and look at all I had to do to get that. Let me, let me show you the other thing. So by the way, here's the chart lock while we're there. Here's the chart lock that says you are getting Postgres version 15.9 of the chart, which is 16.4 version of Postgres that is hard coded and is the gospel. It doesn't matter what's, it doesn't matter that the values file is totally screwed up and says and tagged to version 13 of Postgres. That is the gospel. Therefore, you can go forth and conquer knowing that that is the way it's supposed to be. So if you go back though, um, you can you can look here now at the at the resource file for the values and and using Mac OS. Hell yeah, I'm using Mac OS. Why would I not? You couldn't hear, you couldn't hear, I feel so bad. Let me, let me do that again for you. Here. It's a Unix system. <laughs> Mac is a Unix system. It qualifies. 
Unix is way cooler than Linux. So anyway, here we go. Um, uh, X resource values file. So here's the values file. There it is. Okay. So right away, let me show you how this differentiated from the the actual uh, original Harbor one, right? So, um, and I think I actually have that. Yes, I do. So let's uh, let's diff resources uh, values uh, dash Harbor and resources uh, values dash YAML. They're the same essentially. So these are the this is the only thing that changed between the two. Um, so here we have a tag that's 13.6. Okay. And that's the broken tag. We've already talked about that in a separate video. So we updated it to 16.4, which by the way, is consistent with the dependency I just showed you in the charts.lock file. Right? So I'm not going to rant anymore about that. I want to, um, here we have backup enable true. Where did I find that? I found that because I went to the Postgres, I told you in a previous video, I went into the Postgres uh, Bitnami chart and I saw this thing called backup in there. I saw this PG dump stuff and I was like, what's that about? Because I'm about to write all that. It was already there the whole time. So I just had to turn that to true. The reason that's not there is because it's not in the harbor YAMLs file, the harbor.yaml file. Why? Because Helm does something very strange with dependent subcharts and I'm going to end with this, but it's super important that you understand this. If you don't understand anything else about Helm in this video, just know this. When you do Helm show values in order to generate the values file that you're going to go in and then update, right? And you have subchart dependencies and you can look for those in charts.lock or you can look at them at the top of the chart file with the dependencies. I don't know why they're both there with an authoritative place to look for them, honest to God. It's here because it actually has the version locked down. So go look in chart.lock versus chart.yaml. So this is more than you ever want to know about home, but maybe this will save somebody else pain and suffering. So all of these images and infrastructures and annotations, these are wrong. This is completely wrong. And this here, this list of dependencies is all nice and everything, but it doesn't lock down the version. It's like, oh, you can lock that, that version someplace. I don't know. This must be because it's metadata or because it's documentation data. I don't know. I don't care because the actual version is in chart.lock. So just know that. The actual version for this chart is in chart.lock. This means that effectively, effectively, when you run Helm template or you run Helm install, either way, what Helm is doing and, and this can be this. We just confirm this by looking at the resulting manifest, the YAML files that come out of those commands, right? So what Helm does, whether it's documented this way or not, is it it grabs these in. It starts with its own YAML dot, you know values that YAML file, and it starts with its own stuff, and it runs its chart file, and it uses those values to generate all its stuff, and then it grabs the entire uh, uh, value default values dot YAML and the entire chart for every one of its dependencies, Redis, Postgres, and in this case, common, right? And those things become logical, logically included into the chart. So that means all of the, the values dot, yeah, this is very important. Okay. I'm going to pause here for a fact. All of the values dot YAML from the Postgres Bitnami chart dependency, all of the values dot YAML from the Redis chart dependency are effectively and logically included when you run the template command, even though when you do the show, show values, you know, to Helm show values command to get the harbor values YAML file, you are not getting the values files for Redis or Postgres, but they are still valid. And, and then to top it all off, um, in order to make it easier for us, they have allowed us to put all of that into the values file, which is why you get crap like this. You get this thing, right? So this is how Helm works. Helm says, if there is a, you know, farthest to the left, uh, postgres.sql in this case, that matches one of our Helm dependency names, everything in here is authoritative. Everything in here wins over the other upstream chart values.yaml file that's kind of implicitly loaded but not printed anywhere. Now, the thing that bothers the crap out of me is that when you do show values here, there is no option. Let me, this is very important. I looked for it forever. And if you know where it is, please put it in the comments. I'll come kiss you on the mouth. 
there is no option to do Helm show values that will that will pull down the values.yaml files for each of these subchart dependencies in an organized way so that you have them all along with your values.yaml file from the, the, the core repo that you're copying. This means that if you want to follow the flatten and then apply kind of idea that most of us do, that's the idea behind my KSAP and our specification for KSAPs. If you want to do this properly, then the only way to do it is to do show values and save up resources slash values.yaml. But in addition to that, you have to call that same exact command for every of the one of the sub charts. And then, and then this is where they comes. This is where the kicker comes in in order to include those all right. So you have them all for reference and in order to include those all and to get them all into the final template, you have to modify your build command, which I have not yet done, but you have to modify your build command to include all of those resources. So values dash heart values dash Postgres, uh, Redis, etc. You can either do that or you can just look at those charts and do what I did with the backup and then go into the master values.yaml file and override them at that location so that you don't have to keep that. But most people, most people who are going to want to flatten, they're going to want to keep a hold of those charts because they're going to want to know what changed between versions. And there's no way to know that if you have a dependency, like let's say, let's say the subchart dependency were to change right? And you would have no way to know how the values file changed from what you just built to the new one. You have no way of knowing that because you can't diff the previous values in the file. Not to mention the fact that all the comments that come in the values file that we've gotten used to reading and knowing, oh, I'm going to go change this thing here. Don't exist. They don't exist because they are not in the subchart. They're not, they're, they're not stored anywhere. So you have to go get them by yourself. That's the only way to do it. Now there is one remaining mystery and that is what wins, right? I have a feeling that the, the, the main values file for the main project in this case, Harbor wins out over everything else, but I'm going to further do some research here to find out if the order of the file inclusions, which I, which was a, a totally, it said multiple files allowed. And I was like, Oh, okay. So I, I didn't know that before. And so what this means is that it's very possible that the last file wins, right? So any place that you have global values that, that conflict with one another, and, and I'm, I'm pretty positive. There's going to be some pretty radical helm scope, uh, naming collisions that are going to happen. And so I'm going to proceed to test what happens when you download the entire Postgres values file and combine it in this way, rather than just overriding it as a tiny little section within the supported, you know, and included Postgres, uh, part of the Harbor YAML file. Um, I personally, I don't, I, I would rather not do that, right? I, I would rather have the entire values files for each of the subchart dependencies available. So I know what I'm dealing with. And hopefully this has helped you understand home a little bit more. I, I had to make this video because it's driving me absolutely crazy and it's the weekend and I want to get out of here. Hope you had fun figuring this out as well as I did. Bye.